You know, I hate when I accidentally hit a button. <laughs> right in the middle of a upload. Oh my goodness. Y'all, this right here just fell in my hands. As I was saying in the previous video. We're going to talk about G-Train. We are connecting these generational uh, organized crime rings. The OGs passed it down to their sons and daughters. But I was following <laughs> on my way to G-Train. <laughs> I was following this huge bus a few years back, I think it was 2019, 30, 30 man bus, I'm looking for some names, some last names, and ran across this. I want y'all to hear these last names. Okay. That's right, this affidavit contains a long list of charges that Tavius Jackson is facing, finally arrested after authorities say that he evaded them for almost a month. Police say that he was arrested with a loaded handgun, numerous drugs, and cash. But the scariest detail, they say he's just one man in a 30-person operation. Jackson and his girlfriend, Tyranny Mims, as they were entering a car on Tyranny Monday. Who? When Jack Tyranny Mims, as they were entering a car on Monday. When Jackson threw a, a backpack into the vehicle. When confronted, police say Jackson, quote, friend Tyranny Mims as they were entering a car on Monday when Jackson threw a backpack into the vehicle. When confronted, police say Jackson, quote, adamantly claimed ownership of the backpack, which contained a loaded handgun, 85 grams of marijuana, and 38 oxycodone pills. In all, Jackson faces 13 charges, while Mims is looking at five felonies herself. The Shelby County District Attorney's Office confirms the arrests of Jackson and Mims are part of a 30-person bust from earlier this month, where they claimed everyone involved was a mid- to high-level dealer of drugs, including fentanyl and heroin. The Memphis Area Prevention Coalition says fentanyl as drugs found on the scene. That doesn't mean fentanyl wasn't... Tavius Jackson and the rest of that group will have their day in court, but for now, Jackson's bond sits at 650... I fell upon that trying to see the names of these looking for other last names and found another Mims. 30 people. And this is in 2019. Can y'all hit the like button for me, please? Why I do pull up something? We're going to get over there to uh, Oh, she's pretty. Oh, she's tyranny's pretty. This is her. Tyranny Mims with that Jackson guy. There I go. She about that lie. Yeah, they in deep. So they were a part of that 30 people bust. Because they said that Jackson guy and Tyranny was just two of the 30 people. 
She reminds me of CEO Teasy's baby mama. Her name is kind of similar to hers, ain't it? Ain't it? Uh, dang it, what's that girl's name? Her name is Timberney. And her name is Tyranny. These, the, the, the connections are so deep, y'all. It's just funny. It's just funny. Uh, this was uh, back in 2015. It says, Day Night at Ronnie Wood's Party. Ronnie Wood's. Uh, Bo Vans, the Mims, the Woods, the Bobos, the Crumps, Hewlett's. Organized crime. Michael Ray. Doc. Oh. This is a uh, black youngster's uncle. Michael Ray, got you. Cha. Let me get on over to a <laughs> G train. There go them crumps. Link to black youngster them folk, which means that they would also be linked to the memes. Yeah, I need y'all to hit the like button. I done got deep out into. Oh my goodness! I hate I hit that button while ago. Mm. I done got deep off into my research. I don't even want to go over to D-Train. Can y'all hit the like button? My other going out, going dead. Oh, man. Let me get the D-Train before I forget. Yeah, I'm going to be into some serious research. Where is it at? Can y'all hit the like button? I ain't sung nothing. I just been on it. Let me get, let me, let me get here. Uh. Cecilia, this is Publisher's Clearinghouse. South Memphis. Lemoyne Street. Housing Project. We're going to talk about a guy by the name of George Hewlett. So we can just call him G Train. G Train. City know him by Lemoyne Street Housing Project to be exact. I think they've been torn down. Talk about a guy by the name of George Hewlett. So we can just call him G Train, which the whole city know him by. One of the most infamous gangsters to come out that city, along with Craig Pettis. Along with Craig Pettis. Um, and to be honest, as gangster as Memphis is, let alone South Memphis. Um, it's surprising that we don't have more stories, and that's my bad. By the name of George Hewlett. So we can just call him G Train, which the whole city know him by. One of the most infamous gangsters to come up that city, along with. Craig Pettis, Yo Gotti, Black Youngster, Dolph, or any of this, I don't know where to. So, Memphis is located in Tennessee. And 
as the most dangerous city in the nation. In 2007. So, um, so it has more than 2007, according to FBI data. Memphis was listed as the most dangerous city in the nation. So, is the most, is the city where you have the most chance of something bad just happening to your ass? <laughs> Period. Who knows what it is? Might get stumped. Might G-train. get shot. Might get robbed. Might get abducted. <clears throat> you never know. The most is the city where you have the most chance of something bad just happening to your ass. <laughs> Period. Who knows what it is? You might get stumped. You might get shot. You might get robbed. You might get abducted. <clears throat> you never know. But your chances of something happening to you is highest in Memphis, regardless. And that was in 2007. Um, now, in a city of s- or 300 gangs and sets operating in Memphis, um, and pretty much from my research, it looks like um, some of the same gangs from Chicago. And based on my research, according to Memphis Police, they're going to say like Chicago um, gangs invaded Memphis somewhat. You're going to have your vice lords. You're going to have your gangster disciples. Um, I even see him. He has a, some stones. Um, when I was doing the research on G Train. Now, um, a lot of the gangs are home based. Kind of a jet or a street or a group of guys, and that's only that one gang. There's no other gang in another state. So that's going to be pretty much the difference and G train was part of LMG. a gang called LMG um, and there's many derivatives or many acronyms to that name but the one that stood out to me was going to be the love Murdering gangsters. Love murdering gangsters. Okay. Play on Lemoyne Gardens, um, which is the housing project where they were from. Now, let's talk a little bit about Lemoyne Gardens because you can't talk about G Train without talking about Lemoyne Gardens. It's gone now. now Lemoyne Gardens was a housing project that was located in South Memphis near the Lemoyne Owen College. Um, it opened its first 60 structures in October of 1941. Now, with the amount of gangs that we talked about that they had in Memphis, it said that G Train was to it with the gangster disciples and um, from some accounts the beef could have started in the early 90s when they beat up one of his brothers really bad um, the beef ended up turning into a shoot on um, from some accounts the beef could have started in the early 90s when they beat up one of his brothers really bad. Um, the beef ended up turning into a shoot on site. Beef, I saw some accounts where they said G Train would dress up as a 
gangster disciple in their colors, calling out their calls. Um, and when the rivals would respond, they would open fire on them. Mm. One incident mm. that stands out is going to be the murder of a guy named Daryl Jordan, or Cowboy is what he, he was known. He was shot 12 times. Um, it was said they gave a death confession to the police saying that train shot him. I want to say they said G train ended up going to trial for that and being found not guilty. It was said that he, like, maybe called the cowboy over to the car, but nobody could identify him with a weapon. Two guys by the name of Frederick Johnson and Albert Smith. They actually... Who? A Johnson and a Smith. Took the charges. <laughs> Car, but nobody could identify him with a weapon. Two guys by the name of Frederick Johnson and Albert Smith. They actually uh, took the fall for that. Um, it was charged for voluntary manslaughter. Wow. So hold on. So what I'm hearing is a Johnson and a Smith took the fall. For G, for G, so Justin Johnson, Cornelius Smith, and CEO Bobby Jordan or Cowboy is what he, he was known. He was shot 12 times. Um, it was said they gave a death confession to the police saying that train shot him. I want to say they said G train ended up going to trial for that and being found not guilty. It was said that he like maybe called the cowboy over to the car, but nobody could identify him with a weapon. Two guys by the name of Frederick 
Johnson and Albert Smith, they actually uh, took the fall for that. Um, it was charged for voluntary manslaughter. Um, and in 1998, he said he was suspected to have shot at two GD gang members from a moving car. A week later, officers um, said that they found him over the dead body of a guy by the name of Demetrius Jones. Uh, so it was it was a real real fast time from like 1997 going forward. The G train. Um, a lot of people in the street see that his name was rising at that time. Everybody wanted to be around him. Everybody wanted to be associated with him. It's a guy that we covered called Finesse. The level of respect that this man kind of commands, even though it's this time. Um, and pretty much show you how Memphis and definitely South Memphis people like Lord the drug lord with like Craig Pettis. Um, but I want to say G Train came to his demise on November the 10th, 1999. And was said to not only be like a, a big time street dude, but he had businesses. They said that he owned several businesses. I know one was going to be a club called the headquarters, and that's actually where he ended up being murdered at. I think the other business that they said that he owned was going to be a barbershop. Now, when he was murdered, he was murdered, like I said, November the 10th, 1999. And in a commercial appeal, a guy by the name of Chris Conley wrote an article where he said that the city is on alert for retaliation and gang killings and pretty much was saying how police were stepping up their surveillance in the city's gang operations, hoping to head off violence and retaliation for the execution of G Train. Um, and they pretty much, at that time, they estimated that it was up to 12,000 people belonging to certain amount of some large gangs. Um, was 29 at the age of his death was the fourth gang boss to come pray to either the legal oh, system. Hold on. Oh, that's the street crump. Okay. Of 1999. In Memphis, and uh, uh, some of these guys that we're definitely gonna cover. Um, I have one definitely I have my eye on, but some of the other guys that ended up falling victim at that time was gonna be a guy by the name of Marcus Boyd. If anybody remember any of these other cases, too, y'all get in the comment box. Know y'all know about G Train now. Marcus Boyd, now we talked about the gangs in Memphis, these are going to be some of the other gang bosses to have Boy. some kind of legal troubles or were ended up being murdered at towards the end of 1999 in Memphis. It's going to be Marcus Boyd, he was former head of Memphis's largest gang, which is going to be the Gangster Disciples. Um, he was recently charged in the execution of a high-ranking GD from Chicago by the name of Omar Stokes.
votes. Um, and he was also facing conspiracy charges. Mm -hmm. There was another guy by the name of Louis Grimes who was the leader or the ambassador of the Blackstones in Memphis. And he, when, in a, with a wild twist where he sent four youths to boost clothing from some place, maybe a department store to replenish $1,500 that was taken from the gang till while fleeing from that alleged death in their stolen car, the youths ran into an officer mm. by the name of Don Overton, um, killing him in a squad car. So it was a rough, rough time in Memphis for gangs towards the millennium. Um, get back on track with him. It was said that there was hundreds and hundreds of people of mourners there. Um, he's still a huge figure in Memphis. I seen in, I want to say maybe like in 2011, I can't remember where the club that he actually owned ended up being burned down and they said how it was a notorious place and it hadn't been open even though it burned down since his murder um so he's okay y'all i had to pause in the middle of the night go to sleep get some rest i was gonna pick up um but i see <laughs> that in the middle of the night that the mayor of Memphis reached out to the, what do he call it? Let me see. Over here. Uh, he met face to face with the city's highest ranking gang leaders two weeks ago to ask for them to cease fire. The gang leader said, The mayor agreed to put their guns down and stop the killing in s if certain conditions were met. Wow! Okay, so, I'm, because I don't want to get off track. I want to hear what is going on uh, with a G train, but y'all do know I'm coming back to this, right? I want to know what the terms and the conditions was. It's bad out there, y'all. I told y'all. I've been telling y'all that for how long? I told y'all it was a war. I told you they was choosing sides. Y'all remember that? They was choosing sides. They was going to war. Remember, I told y'all that primarily all of this stemmed originally, you know, <laughs> for Dolph and Big Nooski. There were some other things that happened, but this major, major last... Mm, Two years really intensified last year to the point where other folks, family members, females, key, all of that type of stuff, snatched them out of that. Yeah, last year got crazy, and it was it's about to get mm, uh, coast. What's it? Is it the Coast Guard now? Uh, uh, National Guardish should have been in Memphis. Y'all building this and adding this and 15 million here. No, you need the National Guard. And and now they're talking about bringing uh, what's the NBA thing? All Star. They 
to Memphis? Shit! The devil is a lie. But I definitely will be back on this. Trump met face to face with the city's highest ranking gang leaders, asking them for a ceasefire. Thank you for joining us. I'm Joy Redfin. I'm Joe Birch. The gang leaders agreed to put down their guns and stop the killing if certain conditions were met. Action News 5's Joyce Peterson joins us live now with the gang's demands in order for there to be peace in the land. Joyce? Yeah, pretty stunning revelation tonight from the mayor. Uh, he talked about his meeting with Memphis gang leaders during a panel discussion tonight on youth workforce development. The mayor said gang members told him they want good paying jobs and the education needed to get those jobs. Get them in a the room and just let me talk to them. During a youth workforce development discussion at the Community Foundation of Greater Memphis Monday night, a crime-fighting confession from the city's new mayor. Two weeks ago, Mayor Young met face-to-face -face with Memphis's top gang leaders. And my ask for them in that conversation was, can we get a seven-day ceasefire? Just seven days, where there's no shooting, no killing. And they said, yeah, we would be willing to do that. And they gave me a couple of caveats. Mayor Young said the gangs wanted assurances their enemies would agree to the ceasefire. The other thing they said mm. was, well, you know, our young guys, they need money. They need money in their pockets. That's the way you can change it. Gang members said Young want good jobs and the upskilling needed to get them. This group celebrating J.P. Morgan Chase donating more than $272,000 to, to work, the Collective Blueprint, a nonprofit that helps unemployed young people find a successful career path. Greater Memphis has more than 45,000 young adults ages 16 to 24 who are either out of school or out of work. Nearly half of those young adults are in poverty. Gang leaders also telling Mayor Young... We don't have programs at, at our community centers. We don't have things to do, so we go out, we steal cars, and we ride around with our friends. Mayor Young said a Chicago study found a 45% reduction. Imagine that the mayor would be talking to us directly. If you come to our hood, if you come over there and ask them to put the guns in, they would do it because they've never seen anybody like you in their community talking directly to them. All right, if you were the Bluff City right now to fight the crime crisis, Call the for first C5. one Memphis community meeting is being held tomorrow night, 6 p.m. at Whitehaven High School. I'm back on G Chain. Two guys were looking to control the streets. George, G Train, Hewlett, representing the LMGs and the Vice Lords, and Daryl, Cowboy Jordan, and the GDs. These two gangs were back on the jump. generational. It is reported, and again, it's reported. I had to repeat that because folks be skipping over stuff and like to make up their own minds. So when I say reportedly, that means that's what that was, was reported from lie. different mediums. Moving right along. It sort of reminds me of the road ahead when G Train pulled down on Cowboy while he was smoking on some weed. Smoke. Things got out of hand quickly as Gunman exited G Train's car. That's who? Shot Cowboy when G Train pulled down on Cowboy while he was smoking on some weed. But a hand quickly as Gunman exited G Train's car and shot Cowboy 12 times. Allegedly, when police arrived on the scene, Cowboy was still alive and told them, Train shot me. G Train was formally charged for the murder of Cowboy, but was acquitted of the charge. I know people all over me told their stories about the group. D'Angelo, a.k.a. Wild, Curtis Crump, the Dog Pound, who? My Curtis Crump, the dog pound. Curtis Crump. My guy. Young Curtis Crump, the dog pound. My guy. So again. <laughs> Y'all do know Auntie Fee did not know this was in here. Again, the Crumps is linked to... 
LMG G Train, which is CEO Bobby's daddy. Crumbs. I don't know about Curtis. I know a C Crump now. I know what he go by on social media. But it's the Crumps. It's Unk Keons. Folk. Now we also learn of a Frank Johnson and another Smith who was tied to LMG, which is a straight drop Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith, again, a CEO Bobby. Okay, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it's all, so it's as if the generation, so uh, of the OGs, trickled a uh, hand down this mob cartel family cartel to the, the guys now that took out Dolph and what's his name uh, Aunt Keon was picked up arrested on unrelated charges they got his picture his fingerprints, all of that now. He in the system. <laughs> they picked him up on some bogus charges for questioning. He was let go on his own recordness and a thousand dollars. But if he didn't have a record, a previous record, how could he be in, be in contempt of court? If he didn't have a previous record, he was he can have a gun. Only people can't have a gun is convicted felons. So what's really going on? It's police cover up again. Yeah, I'll be back. I don't I'll be back. I need to end this. <laughs> can y'all hit the like button, please? Hit the like button. Hit the like button for me, please. Hit the like button. Hit like button. Oh, yeah, I got more. Hit the like button. So I can come on back. Part two and three. No, part three. Peace. Dolph didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance. <laughs>